How's it going, guys? Uh, I figured I'd give you a new tour of the the studio room out here. This is my video editing and gaming, PC gaming room out here. I'd start you off with uh, showing you my computer. This is my PC right here. I don't know how well it's picking up on the camera, but I got an MSI uh, Crate SLI motherboard in here. I have a i7-4790K uh, processor in here and it's it's overclocked where it runs at 4.5 gigs at all times I have a GTX 970 in here MSI GTX 970 graphics card and it's stock clock I think was a thousand megahertz I got it running at 1355 megahertz overclocked I have uh, 16 gigabytes of uh, a data DDR3 in here and then I have an, an Alpha 800 watt 80 plus uh, gold certified uh, power supply. And I have a ADATA uh, SD uh, solid state drive in here that has my operating system and most of the programs that I use. And then I have a one terabyte uh, Toshiba drive in there hard drive that I keep my uh, games and stuff on and then I actually have an external drive I have this I have this Seagate uh, one terabyte hard drive right here this is my video archive storage so every, all the videos I do on YouTube and stuff or I take of the family are stored on this uh, Seagate drive and I'm actually gonna have to get another three or four of these guys because they're filled up pretty quick quick with the raw with raw video footage you know not edited and then of course everything's backed up on YouTube <laughs> anyways that's my computer and my current monitor right now isn't a computer monitor at all it's a Samsung uh, 46 inch TV plasma screen it does 1080p that's my current monitor right now that's getting replaced uh, sometime this year with a 40 inch 4k uh, computer monitor that runs off DisplayPort because this does 1080p and it being that big uh, scaling is really crappy and uh, Windows doesn't scale very well to begin with on large uh, monitors but scaling would be better on a 4k because it's like having four 1080p computer monitors anyways that's my computer setup guys <coughs> We go over here the first instrument that I have right here this is my limited edition uh, Schecter Texas Chainsaw Massacre Avenger and this is the this is the six string that I play the most <coughs> it's got a Nico monster three pickups in it and then uh, my seven string this is my agile my Agile, uh, I forget what, what the model number is, I think it's a Cepheus, I think that's correct, it's a Agile 7 string multi scale guitar and it's got stock active pickups in it from Rondo Music, it's a 30 inch scale on the B string, 20 inch scale on the e, the high E, this is the 7 string, that this guitar is the one that gets the most play uh, out of these two main ones right here my two main guitars this is my moving on guys this spear right here this is a spear PD1 I don't even think they make these it's either a PD1 or it's called a gladiator that I don't think they make these guitars anymore uh, spears still around guys but I don't think they make that model anymore it's got these are Duncan design pickups in here but they say spear on them so uh, when you move along, this is a Jackson Kelly that I picked up. It's one of the cheap Jackson Kellys. Uh, brand new. This guy was probably, you know, four hundred bucks. These, these two in the middle don't get to get much play at all. <coughs> and here's my. Uh, this is my Kona uh, special uh, zebra wood. The body is zebra wood. The neck is 
walnut. Uh, it's five piece neck. It's walnut and uh, mahogany neck. Anyways, guys, that's my that's my four string. That's the base, my new base that I play a lot. Then moving on, here's my spear SP1 five string. Yeah, this is the five string that it's pretty dirty right now. It hasn't got much play because the my preamp's out on it, so I don't play it at all. Uh, all I gotta do is order a new preamp. This guy's got spear pickups, which are at, these are actually uh, oh, Wilson Wilson pickups, but they don't say Wilson on them. They they say spear, and uh, it has a silhouette of a naked woman on it. And if you were to order this model, this model's still available. It will. It comes with block inlays. It doesn't come with a naked woman on it. Uh, then you move along, and this is one I picked up the other day. This is a an '84. That's '86. Uh, my '80. It's an '86 uh, Fender Bullet Base. It's got flat wounds and stuff on it. I don't play this one. They sound really dull. The strings on it because they're flat. They're flat wound strings. Then this is the. The poor bass that got a, that gets abused at band practice that I left over there that needs to be cleaned up and restrung. This is a New York Pro. This guy is like three hundred dollar bass, guys. Uh, New York Pro five string. This is the one that I was beating up before I got my new Kona. <clears throat> then move on to a company that doesn't exist anymore. This company right here, Garrison. This company right here existed and they were bought out by Gibson. And they were going to do something with the guitar company from Canada. They're from Canada. And they kind of just squashed the company and made it disappear. This is my my uh, LS1. Uh, it's a custom custom made guitar for me. Uh, Gar Garrison LS1. The LS1 is actually my initials with my last name first. That's all abalone, you know, Vine of Life inlay and abalone uh, binding. This guy's a uh, oven call back and sides, mahogany neck, and cedar top because I like the cedar tops better than the spruce tops. And then it's got uh, brass tone pins on the bottom, kind of makes the guitar a little bit brighter. This is the, that's the acoustic I used to play the most. Then this I inherited whenever my, my grandpa Bulger died. Uh, it's an Epi, which is an Epiphone, but this is in the 80s when the Norlin company owned Epiphone instead of Gibson. This is just an Epi acoustic. It's like an 80s model. This is a horrible guitar. <laughs> and then you move on. This is my my uh, cigar box guitar that I built from scratch. Didn't even use a cigar box. I actually built the cigar box myself. And any, any strings. It's got a... That's a bridge for a banjo this is a banjo bridge now got the banjo bridge I made the nut myself anyways that's my cigar box guitar then you move over and there's a this is my violin it's just a cheap Palantino violin that's uh, it's a three-quarter size I I'm supposed to play a four four size but I bought a three-quarter size by mistake because I didn't know nothing about violin but I do play a little bit of violin and then you move over here. This is the new pickup that I got. The the new guitar that I got. This is a Teton or Tetone Teton, I think. Uh, classical. I don't even know what model this is. It is a STC 105 NTM. This is guy right here is uh, mahogany back and sides, um, mahogany neck. And cedar top because I don't like the spruce tops all that much. Uh, rosewood fingerboard, all that good stuff. Anyways, that's the, that's the instruments, guys. Uh, my amp. Oh well, that's not all the instruments. And then, as you see here, here's an Austin. This is my daughter's guitar. This is an Austin with custom pickup covers and pink knobs. And, you know, it's just a three-quarter size guitar. And this this guitar right here, this bass. This is a 70s model, I believe, airline bass. 
and it had a, a plastic cover top and then it had a big old goofy airline logo here and it had been through some crap and lost the other pieces but it's got an original piezo style bridge pickup and just like a normal big old single coil pickup and then there's my cello that's also a palantine i play a cello a little bit but this guy needs strings and cello strings are expensive i did have a, a stand-up bass i actually played the heck out of the stand-up bass but uh, i sold the stand-up bass off because i needed money anyways guys that's that's the instruments that the amps that i'm rocking i'm rocking uh pot hd 500 down there on the floor that's running through my my Behringer studio monitors and then I have a line 6 DT25 combo amp designed by Bogner. Uh it's all tube and then there's my little practice rig my ultra bass BXL 1800A the aluminum cone and then over here in the corner I have a modified Bugera uh, 333 with different transformers and different tubes in it. It's got uh, Groove tube preamp tubes and Ruby tube uh, power tubes and then there's a Bugara cabinet down there, but it's got Celeste and Vintage Sturdies in it instead of the cheap Chinese Bugara speakers that were in it And then this little guy up here. That's really really pretty is a uh, 73 73 it's a 73 this is a 73 I forget what the brand is sound projects company model r100b uh, it's even got the the Jensen loudspeaker the little one inch square magnet Jensen loudspeaker made in the USA this little guy needs tubes, but you can't get the tubes. And I don't know what the Croft reference the tubes to. This is a little harmonica amp. Uh, anyways, that's a cool one. I got that one. My, my grandpa died. That was his harmonica amp. And those are kind of collectible because they're made out of, they call it press board. It's cardboard. The, the body of it's made out of cardboard. And then they cover it with vinyl. They just glue vinyl to it. And a lot of those didn't make it. So people put them in the garage and they get a leak. And the, basically the amp melts. Cause it's made out of paper <laughs> anyways guys that's that's the instruments that are in here and all my gear in the studio and you know that's that's all I got for you today guys I hope you all enjoyed the tour and I'll see y'all guys in the next video